Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the about section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'm going to share with you some of the features in this Top Don scan reader. It's for OBD reading error codes in your car and getting other information. Let me go ahead and get started. Let me start off by saying, if you own a car or truck that is 1996 or newer and at least 10 years old, you really should have your own scanner tool. These things cost anywhere from 50 bucks to 100 bucks for your entry level ones and they will save you a lot of time, frustration and hassle if you can pull this out from your cabinet or something and scan your own codes. It's a big hassle running back and forth places, going to auto body places, going to auto parts places just to get your codes read. Before we get too far along, let me say this. These code readers are good for your basic codes and mechanic stuff. Letting you know if your car is ready to pass emissions, miss, uh, reading error codes in the car that have to do with emissions, evaporator leaks, misfires, which cylinder misfire, stuff like that. These inexpensive code readers are not designed or meant to help you troubleshoot or clear uh, specific systems in cars. An example of that, if you have an airbag error code in a Volvo, it's probably not going to see find or clear that code. If you have some kind of service light that needs to be reset, it's probably not going to reset that. If you have an ABS malfunction in a 2008 Audi, it's probably not going to let you know what's going on there. But your basic car functions like a bad mass airflow sensor or some other sensor that affects your fuel trim or fuel economy or how your car mixes the fuel and air or misfires, it's good for that kind of stuff. I got this one here to test it out. I got it from Amazon. So if you want one of these, you could get it from Amazon. I'm just going to show you how it works real quick. It has instructions, some information about being able to be updated off the internet through your computer, but I don't know how necessary that is. This thing here should be able to take care of any codes that you currently have in your car. Use it. To use it, the first thing you want to do is turn your car off. Find your OBD port. My car is a 95 and it still has one. A lot of vehicles didn't have this till 96 because that's when the U.S. government, government made it necessary. You remove the dust cover from it. You plug it in. A lot of cars have this port under the knee portion of their dash somewhere. So if you get on your knees, look down there, you'll find the port. Some cars have it in the armrest. It's usually somewhere close to the driver. Once you have it plugged up, that's what you see. You turn your vehicle to run. That means turn it on, but don't start the car. It's not necessary to start the car to use this. People don't realize this, but your car may not have the check engine light working. Gosh, it looks like this check engine light is supposed to be here and it's not working. So this car may have a fault code and I don't even know it because the check engine light's not working. So now I'm looking at the screen. Let me go ahead and see if I can get it to diagnose the car. I'm hitting OK. It's checking some things out in the car. Let's see where it goes from there. The screen had some information. I hit OK. The next thing screen says read code. I'm going to hit OK for it to read the codes. So even though my check engine light is not working, it will tell me how to get codes read. It says there, ignition is on, verify the vehicle, OBD2 compliant. 
it went to this screen giving some information I'm gonna hit OK I'm gonna see if it will read codes this time it's seeing if it's supported vehicle has no faults no codes so even though my check engine light is not working it has told me that I do not have any codes so I'm going to hit OK go back or this arrow to go back to the screen now I'm going to start the engine and I can arrow down so that I can read live data so here I hit OK view all items it's scanning the car it's going to tell me what my live data is fuel system I don't know what that is but you could look these things up low value 8% it's read my live data and then engine temperature 93 degrees Celsius I need to get those values changed to Fahrenheit going to the next page it's showing me my fuel trim engine RPM vehicle speed go to the next page ignition timing airflow meter information throttle position sensor oxygen sensor output now that's my final thing short term trim so there you have it that's your live data which you can use to diagnose stuff we're going to go back go back again and we're going to get a freeze frame or a O2 sensor test test hit OK bank one O2 sensor I hit OK on that my vehicle does not support that test so I'm going to go back I'm going to go vehicle information hit that it sh should tell my VIN my vehicle is not supported again my vehicle is 95 so some of this stuff is not supported and the big thing is you can read and erase codes one thing I realized that my temperature was reading in Celsius so I'm gonna go down here to my tool setup and see if I could change that to read in Fahrenheit units of measure I'm gonna go Imperial okay let me go back from there go back from there now I'm going to scan again and see if it can give me my live, my live data in Fahrenheit instead of Celsius Right now my car is around 210 degrees Fahrenheit. I just heard the fan kick on. So I want to make sure that it tells me what that stuff is in Fahrenheit. Okay. I'm going to arrow down and go to data stream. View all items. See if my temperature is in Fahrenheit this time. Yep. 208 206 degrees so you may want to go through that setup screen make sure it's in the language and the uh, numerical values that you need it to be in you can also check this thing sometimes and see what your actual miles per gallon is while you're driving so see if it's on this next screen here rpm vehicle speed you can check that against your GPS flow rate airflow I don't see the engine mile per gallon on this one it may be in a different setting if you have any questions go ahead and post them this seems like an okay thing I did read somebody's codes and give it to them if it finds a code a lot of times it'll explain what the code is and you can google that code and that information to figure out how to fix your vehicle. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post.
You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.